Welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant Badass. Today I'm making a sheath for a kukri machete, cold steel. So this is the sheath that it comes with. All right, and most people are satisfied with this. I, I'm not because I play around with leather. So I'm I'm doing it out of scraps, and I'm doing it out of scraps for a reason because I want people to be able to go purchase scraps from a hobby lobby or a uh, tandy leather shop michaels the list goes on and on any arts and crafts store pick up a bag of leather and some uh, uh some waxed thread we've got some wax thread up here there we go and uh some of those fat gauge needles and see what i'm doing here and hopefully you can make yourself something like this too i want to do this the easy way and uh not the difficult way i just i want to be able to give you something that you can use and uh you can learn from now the first thing you want to notice about a sheath like this right off the bat all right you you already have this sheath that comes with it when you order a kukri all right you open it up here and then here and then it, it has a slit you see that slit there that is a key feature that you need to remember if you're going to make one of these because if I just made a sheet that this thing goes in and out of, it has to be wider, right? Or this, because this fat in here is going to cut everything open. All right, so the way that works, it lifts out and then pulls out like that. And it leaves you with that. That's the best way I can explain that. But that's how I have to make the sheath. But I want it to have a carrying case. And I've already got one dried, ready to go. So I'm going to pull you over here. Let's get the hacking stuff up. Like I said, this is the carrying case. I'm not getting to that yet, but it's uh, once this comes out, you'll see all of this when I lay it in. But this is going to go on top of the sheet, so I got to get it out of the way. The key part here, like I was saying, you got to pay attention to how this part works. All right, I want to salvage some of this or make something like this. I kind of, I kind of like what they've done here, so I'm probably not going to salvage this. I'll probably make one for it. So it's not going to be done in all black. It's going to be done in leather. I don't need this sheath anymore. I just need to note that before I move on. The shape of the kukri, right? Now, you can use this as your reference because you're probably going to need to because it's hard to remember. But the way it goes in the sheath originally is something that you can use. Or just remember, um, just remember that the uh, non-bladed edge goes out it comes out of the sheet so what I'm gonna do here uh, something a little different than I normally do I want as much leather as possible and I don't need a lot of of a uh, backstop back here okay you see how I'm doing that so I don't have a lot of backstop there I don't I don't need a lot of this okay on this end this end does not matter to me I do need an end to catch here, and that's that's pretty much it. But the main part that I need to worry about is this front half here, because I'm going to be taking scraps. These are just leftover scraps. I got different kinds here. They come in a they come in your bundle, but you can take a piece of scrap like this and use it for your edge. All right. So you would just follow along the line here, and I'm using I'm going to use simple materials today. See how I do that. That's how your blade's going to set in that every single time so it doesn't cut through the sheath. Now, I'm going to use something simple today. I'm not getting silly with it. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to do something that either, this is the Gorilla Glue Clear. This stuff works great on leather. You can use leather glue. They sell that too. I'm just using something that you guys can commonly find and uh, pick up so you don't have to go running around looking everywhere. If you want to use that, you can, but they make glue for that. All right, so that's my edge. So I need to mark that real quick. This is a uh, super permanent marker, okay, made by Sharpie. And then I just get my line. I just want to know where my line is. I want as much room as possible. So I just follow that. 
Save as much material as you can. You just need to get the overall shape. All right. You're, you're probably going to have to do this a couple of times to get this right. So I'm going to pull it forward. I need a little bit more room there. So let's go ahead and bring it back one more time. I didn't like that. I didn't like that line. So I'm going to do it again. Measure twice, cut once, right? Isn't that what they say? All right, I got that line there. And then let's just see how this line will look. Let's tighten this up. See, I'm doing it so I can get my shape. I had to draw that until I got it nice and nice and straightened out. All right, so that's overall that. Now I need to figure out the backstop here. Let's just figure out how much how much room I want to keep for now. Let's just kind of just to get an overall look at what this is going to look like. And I want more back there. I just need to know where that's going to stop. So let's just round that off. You're going to round that. I know this is this kind of it's kind of hard to get this, but. This is the inside, so it's not going to matter. All right, now let me cut this. You see, I've, it, it takes several attempts to get the right shape, but um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now. All right, so as you can see, I've got this where I, I want it. Uh, let's just move this out of the way. And now I've got this guy here. I've got to glue up. And what you could do, um, just put it on the edge. Because you're going to follow the edge anyways. So it's not going to matter. All this is going to get stitched anyways. This is just to hold that in place. Now you're going to have to use clips. I'll get to that. I'm going to show you how to do that. You go to the dollar store. And you get yourself some clips. Alright. It's not going to be fancy. It doesn't have to look super fancy. Let me pause real quick and get my clips. But you can get a whole bunch of these clips for a dollar okay I just take this guy here stick it on there and just kind of hold it up and put them in place you can move them as you go get them in place tack them down pull it to your desired place it's a little it's a little tricky moving your fingers around You don't have to worry about this back side, like I said. It's just the blade. The blade's what you want to worry about. And this is the cheapest way to make a sheath for something like this. And look, man, it's a, it's a machete, all right? Uh, I mean, most people would not go this far to make a machete sheath. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, that's just trying to be realistic here. But uh, I will make this pretty decent. It's uh, going in my bag. Uh, in the event I ever need it, I'll have a nice sheath. I'm not doing, I might do a loop for a ferrule rod, but I think that's as far as I'm going to go. I don't think I'm actually going to put a ferrule rod in it yet. I don't, I don't know. The uh, survival kit itself is going to be pretty nice. All right, so that's your layout right there. Just let that sit and uh, give it about, um, you know, um, uh, a good hour to dry so I'll be back in like an hour and we'll get this going again all right it's been an hour I can take these off now a lot of these guys just uh, make sure you uh, press them down all the way don't slide them just in case it's still slightly uh, still drying but it's okay now the next step you want to do this is going to be your outside, so you want to, or inside if you want to be left-handed or right-handed. I'm probably going to put this on the left hand, but uh, you just set this up here. Uh, this little extra piece here, I've got to cut that off. Just for now. Some thick leather. There we go. <clears throat> All right, like this, flip. That little extra glue you might see there is no big deal. It just comes right off. 
you get this lined up get your marker layer on now you're going to be sanding as well you want to sand these so you want to straighten it out in the end you're going to be doing a lot of sanding get your line all right now i just got to cut that piece out got my piece cut just like that and this is going to be you would want this to be the outside of this so it doesn't really matter how you want to do this this can be your, in, your outside or inside it doesn't matter how you want to do it sometimes this type of leather stains better it's all going to get stained anyways it doesn't matter this is already stained it's staying this color but uh so it's not going to make any changes to it i will trim the edges a little bit when i move on but next thing while this sits i'm probably going to just leave a couple of these on here because i have to stitch on my case before i stitch all this together so just for now i'm just going to leave these on here it's only cured for an hour but i just wanted to go ahead and make my cut before i moved on this will hold everything in place so it doesn't move around on me i know i took all these off and then now i gotta put them all back on just goes with the work this stuff ain't easy all right it's a hobby though so but stuff looks good all right that's to the side now i can go ahead and get this and i'll go ahead and get this off of here all right i've got that off of there i just need to cut it out this is going to be the box i'm using for this it's a johnson and johnson band-aid box but it works just i'm probably not going to use this i'm just kind of using it for my mold i want it to be a larger box so uh, let me cut this out and then we'll line it up now the way you do this is you don't stitch this okay because that's going to get stitched when you come over here and do this side so you don't have to worry about that side you're just going to stitch and and rivet this side here because that side's not going to be stitched all right but i'm going to go ahead i'm going to add a little ferrule rod holder here just just cause and it i think i think it's going to it's going to be a nice piece to have on there just in case i decide to put a ferrule rod on there i don't know yet but i'm going to go ahead and put it i'm probably not going to put one on there but the loop will be there in case i ever want to use it cut out a section for a flap so that it would come over like this something like that if you can see that and move this out of the way so i've got my section for my flap here and i'm gonna go ahead and punch in a couple of rivets my hammer my hammer There's one. There's two. Just like that. Now I can rivet that down. Now I've got to put snaps on here too. I've got my holes for my snaps. There's my other piece there. Just put your snap in place. Just that guy there. Just like that set it up on something metal there we go Doesn't have to be too tight there's your snap next snap no just like that I'm not doing anything fancy for this one it's its sole purpose is just for uh well if you ever need it there it is it's one of those type of deals turn this guy over there we go and it just snaps right on there just like that and this will be tucked in just like that you need it pop it open there you go nothing fancy before I drive these rivets down I want you to see how much space I'm leaving there I'm leaving enough room so when I start stitching I'm not going to hit a rivet right 
So you got to pay attention to what's next. So this is going to go here. This is for my flap before I can actually add the pocket itself. So I've got to get this done first. I'm going to snap the box in place. That way I can go ahead and size it up where it needs to be. It helps me double check everything. So I've got the other side of that I've got to tack down. So that should line that up. It's not going to be the same exact size as that box over there. Okay, so that box probably won't fit in there once I get this done. I'll have to get it wet again. But um, that's my, I just need to get my holes. So you're going to add rivets. And then you're going to add snaps. Okay. You want to get one thing done at a time. So I made this hole for this rivet. I need to get that riveted before I move on. Because you got to keep it all together one thing at a time. If you start punching a bunch of holes here, it might not line up. So you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and rivet that down. Okay, I've got that one. Now it's time for my next one. I just come right down here. I want to catch the corner. I want to get that rivet right in the corner there. Remember how this comes together, right? With the other sheet that I showed you. This whole section from here to here is open. So what I'm doing now isn't going to affect the next part. So you got to remember putting all this together, what it's, going, what it's going to turn out to be when you're done. But you need a section for just the tip of the blade to sit here. And that's that section there that you need. The, the rest of this is just open, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I've got my two rivets to hold it all in line for me until I get over here. Like I said, this stuff is not going to line up the same. Like this bottom part here is going to come down more. So it's gonna it's gonna be kind of a pointy pointy kind of case. Which I could go ahead and rivet that now, which I probably should. But it's gonna be kind of pointy. But I'm not too worried about it right now. I'll get I'll get to that in just a minute. Let me see. If I can get it to stretch, then I'll just go ahead and rivet it down. There's that and that. So I I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and drop a rivet in there real quick while I'm at it. It's good to get that out of the way now instead of later. Alright. Next step is going to be putting a little ferrule rod mount here, which I'm probably not going to use, but I'm going to do it anyway. Alright, your ferrule rod mount, wherever you're going to put that. Like I said, I'm not making this super fancy or anything because it is what it is, okay? It's just a machete. But I am adding a few features to this thing. But you're going to line this up, push in just a little bit. And uh, you're probably going to have to do one rivet at a time to get this lined up. But I'm going to punch holes and put that in place. Alright, that's for my ferrule rod. Now remember, I've still got to stitch all this. So I'm still going to stitch through here. And then I'm going to stitch here and here. So all these little blank spots are going to get filled up with stitching. Not too fancy, just, just a little bit of work there. All right, so the next step is going to be lining this up. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind here, uh, there's going to be a lot of rivets. It is a machete, and it is a kukri, so there's going to be some rivets involved. And up here at the top, you want something to be able to fasten it in place. I can get to that when I'm done for the handle part, because it's opened anyway, so I don't have to stress about it. There you go. Get. Go. Move it. There we go. Alright, bring this back over. Now I can start lining up stuff. This extra stuff I'm not worried about. It's not a big deal. It's an open spot there. I want there to be a little opening so I know where to go. But it's just a machete sheet so I'm not too worried about it. I'll do a little sanding in the end anyway. Alright, so you want to line this up. Most important part, right? Right along here. I can sand all that down when I'm done. Alright, there's that. Let's let's get the bottom. Let's go ahead and knock that out first. Right there. Uh. Go ahead and get this done. Now 
this is where you use large rivets, okay? Not medium. I use I use a uh, medium and large, and I'm using large now. When you get something that's a little bit thicker material, you're going to need to use large, or it's not going to go through. See, it just barely goes through with large. That's your large. All right, let me tack this down. I'm just working my way all the way up. I can go ahead and slide this in. We talked about this earlier, right? It's just going to be a little difficult. But it's fine. If, it, if a little bit hangs off the edge there, it's not a big deal. You can just trim that off. All right. Bring it in. It's hard to line this stuff up. It's not an easy job. There's that, but now I've got this. All right. This is going to come up just a little bit. Just like that. Now, when it moves, you got to pay attention. <laughs> like I was just doing. Uh, if it moves a little bit, you don't want that. Just bring it out a little bit. Make sure it's still tacking. It's not going. Looks like it's kind of going off to the side a little bit. Let's back it up. We'll bring it this way a little bit. I'll get it. There it goes. That's some parts are just a little bit harder than others. All right, we've got it all put together here. These are the rivets. Like I said, I just I messed up one here, but it'll be all right. You can you can fix that later. I I'm not really worried about it. It's a it's a machete, and that's why it's not looking super fancy. Doesn't have to. All right. <clears throat> This guy's going to go right in here. You just need to figure out where you want it to go. So now it's in there. Nice and neat. goes all the way to here. So I need to push it in more. A little bit of extra room, which is not a bad thing. But that'll go over just like that. So I gave myself, see why I gave it that extra room at the top? People are probably like, why? So the extra room here is so that it can curve over. And when I do my snaps, uh, I just need to see where it's going to go for now. That's all in there nice and neat. Now I just need to, I need to close up my business down here. So right about there, I can add my rivet for that. All right, so I've got my, that's my rivets to keep everything together. It doesn't look like much right now, but it starts making progress. Now, when I put this thing in here, it'll go all the way in and all the way to the edge. And I don't have to worry about anything coming out of there. I could slam it in there if I want to. But, uh, there's that. Now I just need to figure out where my snaps are going to go and everything else. Right about here. And then I need to make my tang. So I need to figure out where my tang is going to go. Probably there. Something like that. Just bend that down. Make use of what you already have so you're not wasting any material. But just bring that in like that. See what I mean? You seeing how it all comes together now? Uh, just bring this down here. You don't have to get crazy and wrap the handle or anything. Just leave the handle exposed. It's just going to come up like that. But I'm going to punch that in right there. Basically, just put yourself a couple of rivets there. <laughs> I know it's a rivet job, right? I was like, when is he going to stitch? I'll still stitch. I've just got some... Uh, it's got to have a lot of rivets though. All right, there's your loop for your belt right there. Real simple. And now I got to start working on the snaps to hold this in. Kind of like on this sheath here. You know, you've got your snap here and your snap here. I'm just going to move them up a notch. So they'll be uh, here and here. Something like that. I might only do one. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. Okay, I've got my snaps for my... Zombie apocalypse style <laughs> uh, sheath. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and make my holes. 
and everything you can use um, it's heavier gauge so a lot of this stuff is different gauges anything from uh, 5 ounce to uh, 3 ounce to 10 ounce there's a 10 ounce piece there I can't stitch that and you can't stitch that on a, on a sewing machine so you gotta hand uh, do all this so I use a drill and I don't use a drill bit and everybody always seems to think I use a drill bit and I don't know why but uh, this is just my straight edge punch it's it's polished it's been used quite a bit but there's nothing on it there's no threads it doesn't take away any of the leather so all you got to do is run this through a drill and make all your holes I gotta put my uh, markings of everywhere I want to put a stitch and run it through and then I'm gonna double stitch and all I want to do is what you want to do with you know to double stitch stuff like this just take it two pieces here like this or you can run another piece through it and have a triple stitch quadruple stitch whatever you want to do but however many pieces of uh, material you can fit through there I would I would definitely double it up uh, for something like this but the rivets are gonna hold it together anyways the stitching pretty much there just to, for looks and to seal up any last little openings okay and you could always get yourself a drill press just saying I use a drill press makes life a little bit easier you want to put it in the right position so you don't have to you don't want to have to crank down too many times right about there uh, still moving it stop moving there we go that should work and get it where you want it Gonna make sure I can see. I gotta switch out that light. It's not very bright. How much is how much of that you can see? Turn around so you can see better. Most of this stuff here is just going to be for looks anyway. One spot I'm going to have to uh, put a board underneath to do around the pouch. You don't want to stitch all the way through because the other side is the other side. Right? <laughs> you Look at something like this and just keep doing the thing. It's a lot easier like this if you're doing thick leather. This is, I'm not saying I recommend this at all. This is just what I do. Uh, it's my style. It's what I do. So if people that are more traditional or whatever they do, I don't care. That's what they do. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> Makes my life a little bit easier. And you can kind of see the bottom part there is already done up. Now I got under, like I said, underneath here you don't want to stitch all the way through because that's that's not going to get stitched up. All that has to stay open. So what you got to do there is you got to put a board underneath it. So just put yourself a board. I've already got a board sitting over here, so I can put it underneath there. But uh, get yourself some wood or something like that and shove underneath it or another piece of leather and measure it out so that, you know, you don't go too deep, but you can get deep enough if you need to. But uh, I don't really need to worry about this too much, to be honest. It's not really, uh, nothing's going to go flying out of it or anything, so I'm not too worried about it. I might actually just rivet these bottom ends down here and just be done with it so I don't have to reach in there and try and stitch it. I wish I would have thought about it. I forget things. You ever forget things? I do. Happens all the time. All right. I'm going to keep going. Like I said, alright, I've got it sanded. I just need to add some artwork somewhere. I'm not, not, not quite sure. Sometimes I just like kind of adding some marks just to give it some kind of look.
doesn't look like much until I stain it. My kids are going crazy. Just kind of breaks it up. It doesn't look like much right now until I add more to it. Uh, let's see here. Down here, I'll do the tree. Stinky. Guess I better finish this before World War Three breaks out, right? <laughs> I'm just reading the Drudge. If you get a chance, go to the Drudge Report. Go read that. It's crazy. Looks a little bit different once I add um, all my other stuff. Once I add the uh, saddle tan, it'll break it up quite a bit. There we go. Yeah, this is not easy task. Sometimes you just have to press a little bit harder. I want it to look crazy, that's the point. And that will look crazy all right now over here usually what I do I just kind of go into this and you can just kind of lay it in there go all the way around you'll have to find your spot like I said I just do that just to break it up I just go all the way around all right I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be right back there you go nothing special now i gotta stain it i'm just applying my stain that's all it is to it a little bit of saddle tan you see it all starts to change colors i gotta get around in every bit of this every single little corner it's gonna change the whole look of this thing see how it all starts to i'm going over the whole thing all right let's try it out Shove this guy in there. Nice. Nice and snug in there. Bring this over. Probably go over a couple little spots one more time. I kind of like it like that. I think that's actually good. I think I'm good. What do you think? I know. it's It's not fancy. It's not that cool, but... Look at the size of that pouch. I mean, <laughs> you're talking some major survival gear you could stuff in that sucker. But uh, you could you could doll this thing up some more, load it, load it up. I mean, you're fully stitched, riveted. It's got 10, uh, 10 ounce leather. That's pretty thick. It's got three chunks on this side. Uh, I would say this thing's going to outlive the apocalypse. So, uh if uh, uh if you think otherwise just tell me but uh ferro rod like i said got an opening for that in case i don't want to carry a bunch of crap in here but i got this thing wholly loaded up 
uh, double straps. I just moved them up a notch. Looks like something from a movie, to be honest with you. But uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that thing's... I like it. I like it a lot. I like it. And that's all that matters. So that's just the thing. You have to try other things. Like I, I'm making weird stuff all the time. And uh, the only way you're going to get better is exposing yourself to something ridiculous. And um, you're not going to know if you can do it or not. Or when you do it the first time, you're going to learn from your, mistake, your mistakes. And you won't do that again. <laughs> right. But anyways, but that's it. That's how it turned out. I think it looks pretty BA. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it. And uh, this is for my uh, boss bug out bag. All right. I hope it helps. Love you guys. You're watching SOS. I'm Stas Badass. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic rainbows and unicorns everywhere kind of day. And take it easy.